This video was brought to you by our new Investor Finder. Get weekly investor matches in your industry, your company stage, and your location delivered to your email for free. Sign up with the link in the description. Ever wonder why so many of your cold emails to investors and potential customers go unanswered? Would you like to change that? Today, everyone's inbox is overflowing and most people who get a cold email, just ignore it. So why is your email not breaking through? Because you don't know how to get it opened, read, and acted upon. But there's a way to dramatically increase your response rates by becoming an email ninja. To get responses to your emails, I'm going to break the process down into several core things you need to get right from making your social profile as strong to breaking the ice correctly, having a great subject line, and making sure the email body is super compelling. So let's dig in. If cold emailing someone, the first thing I want you to do is break the ice before the email is sent. How? Use your social profiles and connect with them ahead of time. My favorite approach is to start with LinkedIn. Before you send your LinkedIn request, make sure your profile is rich in substance, up to date, and you have a photo uploaded. Once your LinkedIn profile is looking its best, send your LinkedIn connection request before your email goes out. However, don't just send a generic LinkedIn invitation to connect. Instead, make sure to add a short custom note to your LinkedIn request explaining why you're connecting and why the request is relevant. You can add a custom note to all versions of LinkedIn, including their mobile apps. So LinkedIn is one way to break the ice. Another way, start following the person on Twitter and other relevant social networks. That way, your target contact will get several notifications about you before they get your first email. So technically, the ice, it has been broken. Okay, now let's get into what your actual email should look like. To start with, you'll need a killer email subject line. Don't use things like hello, meeting request, intro, or never ever leave the subject line blank. Instead, create a short, really compelling subject line that has a newsworthy hook, giving the person a strong reason to open. Another great technique is to start the subject line with a recipient's name, kind of like Kaya, love to interview you for dot dot dot. And if someone referred you, make sure to include that in the subject line as well, as that'll dramatically increase your email open rate. When writing subject lines, make sure to keep them as short as possible. There's a very good chance your email will be read on a smartphone where only the first 30 characters or so will be visible. So if you don't have something compelling in the first 30 characters, there's a good chance you'll be swiped off the screen and sent to email purgatory along with the 50,000 other unread messages in their inbox. So let's see where we are in the process of getting your emails answered. Social connections, check. Killer subject line, check. Now, let's put together an awesome email body, something that's personalized, compelling, clear, concise, and has a strong call to action. Here are the key areas I want you to focus on when writing the body of your email. First, you need to start with a very concise overview of what you're working on and what this email is about. Realize the opening line of your email is critical. That's the hook. With that first line, they'll either keep on reading or boom, welcome to deleted. Your opening paragraph should be about three to five sentences, as concise as possible, have credibility, and try to bluff. What's bluff? That means bottom line up front. Don't make the recipient read four paragraphs of text, then at the end say, could I get 30 minutes of your time for a demo? Make sure to touch upon the ask in the opening paragraph. Another critical piece to include in your opening paragraph, credibility. Were you referred by a warm intro? Make sure to point that out. Is this a totally cold email? And do you have things you can mention to establish credibility? Perhaps venture angel investors in your company they may know. Can you name customers already using your product? Maybe you went to the same university as the contact. Maybe your pre-product have no angel investors, but already talked to three interesting potential customers in the space. Mention the three customers you've talked to or are lining up to talk to in the coming weeks. Maybe there are milestones that you've hit, three interviews with Fortune 500 companies, 100 paying customers, 10,000 downloads, $50,000 in monthly recurring revenue, etc. Whatever it is, what can you add to that opening paragraph that shows credibility so you're taken more seriously? Next, I want you to think about how you can make the email more audience-centric. What do I mean by that? Stand in your audience's shoes and think about the with them statement. What's in it for me? Usually when people send emails, it's all about them, what they want, what they'll get out of meeting with you. But in a cold outreach email, you want to think about what's in it for them the recipient. So create a clear value proposition of what your recipient could get out of meeting with you. Further, if you want, you can add a bit of a FOMO. 
You could say something like, I'll be in Atlanta next month meeting with Coke and Delta Airlines with their head of logistics and was hoping we could get together so I could share what we've learned from our discussions with leaders, get your input, and see what you think. Some other examples of a gentle forcing function to get things going? Maybe it's a geographic forcing function like, I'll be in LA next week meeting with two other investors. Or maybe you could try to tie the forcing function in with some credibility, with something like, Dell just brought seven early prototypes of our products, and we only have three left. Love to get 20 minutes of your time to show you why they're so excited. Finally, the last part of your opening paragraph is a clear ask. What do you want? What are you looking for? Make sure to be very clear here. Do you want a meeting, in person or online? How much time do you want? By the way, a quick favor about your ask, never ever put in that email an ask of, I wanna pick your brain. That's the most one-sided ask you could ever make. You're basically saying, I want your time so I can get all of the value. It just sounds so bad. Mention that you want to brainstorm, soundboard a concept or something else, but not pick your brain. Okay, end of rant. Okay, so let's say your ask is for a meeting. Let me share some more Email Ninja best practices when asking for a meeting. First, think about this. As your requested meeting length increases, your chances of a meeting decreases. Conversely, as the requested time goes down, the probability of securing a meeting goes up. So ask for as little time as possible. My suggestion, for initial meetings, ask for just 20 minutes and use your time wisely. Finally, when emailing about meeting dates, assume you're communicating with an international audience. So you should spell out dates such as July 6th, instead of just using numbers. Because if you're in the US, July 6th is seven slash six. But if you're outside the US, most of the time you'd probably write it as six slash seven. So be clear and just write out the date as month and day to reduce the chances of confusion. As we get to the bottom of your email, I have one more suggestion for you. Put your email signature to work. So many times I get emails that lack the person's full contact info. Their signature is simply sent from my iPhone. And you know, that's not helpful to you or me, but Apple does thank you for the free marketing support because you know, they really need it. Anyway, have a rich signature with your name, title, email address, and for gosh sakes, include your mobile phone number. As you're amping up your email skills, just a few more quick points if you're working to line up a meeting. This is about calendar entries. Want to look like a total pro? Once you line up a time to meet or talk, send a great calendar invite. So my name is Steve. I've gotten invites from others and the calendar entry says meeting with Steve. Okay, so like, that's not helpful. Be descriptive in your calendar invites. Who's attending? What's the meeting about so it makes sense on everyone's calendar? In the calendar entry, make sure to include the video conference link or phone number. Or if a face-to-face -face meeting, put the exact meeting address right in the invite in the location field. And if it's a conference call and I need a code or a password, for God's sakes, include the meeting code or password in the calendar invite. And the last thing for calls, make sure to specify who's calling who. Don't put Kaya and Steve call, put Steve calling Kaya on and the phone number. Want bonus points? Copy and paste the email exchange into the calendar entry notes so it's easy for everyone to get a quick refresh regarding what the call is all about. I know that was a lot to cover, so let's recap. Want to know why potential investors and customers are not responding to your emails? Here's why and how to fix the issue. First, break the ice before you send a cold email and use some of your social capital. Have a rich social media profile and connect to people with meaningful, non-generic connection requests on LinkedIn. Your email subject line needs to be really compelling. Most are just not worthy of opening. The body of your email needs to be concise, credible, compelling, have a clear ask, solid with them, and a reason for me to take action sooner rather than later or possibly never. You need to be super easy to schedule with. Ask for short meetings and send rich calendar invites. And there you go. Follow the guidelines above and I can nearly guarantee you'll be well on your way to becoming an email ninja and get a ton more responses. Your mileage may vary, so let us know how this works for you by leaving your experience in the comments below. I hope you found this discussion on mastering cold emails helpful, and if you did, please like and subscribe to both the Slide Bean and Dream Adventures YouTube channels. We both release great startup content weekly. Thanks for watching.